Hi guys, this is Johnny Bergen with another Chicago Blues guitar lesson. Today we're talking about Pee Wee Creighton's Blues After Hours. And first I'd like to make a little note about the title. There's kind of two songs going on here. You've got Pee Wee Creighton's Blues After Hours, which is the one that goes like this. And then you've got the song that came from Erskine Hawkins that was originally just called After Hours and then everybody ended up calling it Blues After Hours anyway by the, by the time everybody in Chicago, you know, started playing their versions of it. And that's a different song. That's a song that goes, you know, it goes like... That's the song that Sammy Lawhorn has a wonderful version of, and that Willie James Lyons did, and that so many people have played. That's the song that Freddie Robinson played, um, Mel Brown, and on and on and on. But this this song, Blues After Hours by Lee Pee Wee Creighton, is just a different song with a different melody, but it has the same mood and the same flavor, and it's in G. And we're going to start with the bass line. I'm going to loop it and then play it for a while and then talk about it. So here we go. But the way he played it was like this. Then he had to slide down. Um, and Pee Wee Creighton recorded this song several times and on the uh, Johnny and Otis sessions, you can really hear this slide like in your face. So take your choice, but at least you know. Here you go, two, three, four. Break the rhythm here. So, there you go. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what just happened. That was a lot. And he's recorded the song live several times. I really like the live version. Um, actually, it has Hollywood Fats on rhythm guitar there. But I like the live version because uh, you can just see it. You can see him play it the whole time and there's a spotlight on him. And, and then when, he, when the song ends and he just does the bass line. the rest of the band leaves the stage um, while he's doing that and it's just real dramatic and it really highlights the mood like this you know he kind of looks down the whole time and he draws you in he just keeps drawing you in with these dynamics so everything here is, a, is about the dynamics and it's about um kind of this brings me to another point 
which is, it's really worthwhile to learn the song note for note. I mean, looking at the live versions that he played and looking at, I found three studio versions, one on Vanguard and then one on the Johnny and Otis sessions and then the one from 1948. I'm sure there's more and I'm, I'm probably forgetting some and I'll please feel free to leave, leave your comments, of course. But it's basically a set piece. This part was sort of not on the original one. As he went on, he added two, you know, two more go-arounds to it. So uh, anyway, I think it's really great to learn the great songs. Just like if you're in college and you read the great books, if you're a guitar player, you should learn the great songs. And uh, just think about all your idols, whoever they are. I mean, I don't know who you're into. Maybe you you think Eric Clapton is the greatest guitarist ever. Or maybe you think it's Peter Green. Or maybe you think it's B.B. King or whoever. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you, every one of those people, whoever your heroes are, they all had some 78 or LP or whatever. And they took it home and they wore it out. And they learned it inside and out. Because that's how you sort of learn how to build things that make sense. If you just learn licks, that's like, you know, I can say cerveza in Spanish, but I can't have a nice conversation in Spanish, you know, because all I know is words, some words here and there. And if you just know licks, you can't build a song out of, out of licks. And you can't really make a, a statement, like this song is a real mood statement out of licks. Um, but you, if you learn whole songs and like what makes them go and the high points and low points, and you learn it all the way through, then you start, you know, that's how all these great players started building their own things. So I'm not saying just learn it and then like that's the end of all music, okay? It's the beginning of all music, all right? So um, good luck. And um, it's kind of a harder road, but uh, it's well worth it. So let's do this song. It's funny. He had no vibrato in the 40s. You know, he, he just went. But then, like, later on in the 70s, he goes. You know, and sort of puts a lump in there. So that's your choice, right? This is a slide up to the seventh fret. And then just roll your finger over. And then just move. You don't really play those notes. You don't really play them so much, but you did, that's how you move your finger back. So ergonomically, it's like this, right? So it's all bent on it's it's all built on rolls. Now roll this over to the next string. Slide this down and roll it over, and you're right there. So it's just a, it's a movement like this. If you can do this, you, big, you can get this. If this is all you get from this lesson, fine. Maybe that's too staccato. simple see how like there's so little movement to get a lot out of it so that's the first 12 bars the next 12 bars is this and now I've got this technique where I just put my pick here and then I use my thumb so because this has a definite sound the pick is perfect for this stating the theme, you're, you're building a foundation for your house here, and you know, it's nice to have a definite attack. This is a little more of a, it's a little more delicate, you know, it might, you might not want to crash into it with your pick. You could, if you have a nice touch on it. But you could, I do this, and then I hit it with my thumb. These are just ideas. This is, so you're asking what this is, right? 12, 12, 12. 10, 10, 10. 
So this is out of a G6 and out of a G9. And it's just, this is a typical, this, these sliding things are very typical. It's in like too late, but a little Walter, it's all over the place. So I'm gonna assume you guys got that. Its counterpart would be like this, okay? This is a C ninth with a root on the E string that you're not playing, you're just thinking. So. so this is, here's your C ninth. Take, leave these little triangle right there, and then just put this up here, your first finger on the Six fret. It's like you're calling. It's really you gotta. It's really not what you play. It's how you play it, right? And then he does the same movement on the three, three, and three on the D, G, and B strings. You can even sometimes it sounds like he has all four strings. Which is neat because he went from a major to the four ninth to like a minor seventh. So that tells a story right there. And now we're on the five, right? Then he does this. So when you do this bend, get your second finger behind it. And then don't do this. Save that for Luther Allison. He's going to come along later. Just let it sit there. And then he does this cool lick, which is kind of a jazzy, it's like a weird little tap dance, and do-do-do-do-do-do. He does it twice in the song. So what that was is 5th fret, 3rd fret on the E string. Open B string. 5th fret, 3rd fret. 5th fret, 3rd fret on the B string. And the D. Open D. That's why it's got to be in G, right? That's just five. Wrapping up the first go around, it goes like this. It's very low Fulsony, isn't it? That's just sliding into the G chord. Then reach your pinky out and just bend it a little bit, not the vibrato. There's the Luther Allison way. Just do it like this. And then he does. This reminds me a lot of sad hours. This is like the California sad hours. You know, it's, it's really similar. This is the top part of your G chord. And now there's the way to make this whole melody passage come to life is dynamics. If you play it like this, you're going to be dead. Oh, somebody told me this is what it is, so I'm playing it now. No. So you go. So it's like you hit it, then you back off and build it. So. When you move it down, your your second finger down one fret, then you're just suggesting the four. That's eleven and ten. Now just let it fall. Let it fall gently, man. Now we're on the four chord, right? This is the top of the four chord, five and three frets on the B and E string. Up three.
four, five, six, and seven on the G string. You can even do the open. Here's what he does. That's kind of like. Everybody can see that's a turnaround. So he describes that like this. third fret of the A string. Now comes this famous part. This is everywhere. This is all T-Bone Walker stuff. It's just Pee Wee really had his own way of playing it like this. See if you can leave this note straight if much as you can. And then tug these, because this sounds lame. It sounds like it doesn't have much expression. So you got to tug these. Then you got to move kind of quick to either a G6 or a G. I think it's just a G. just typical stuff. No vibrato, just let it express itself, right? And then he does the greatest look ever. Um, you know, you can tell they're having fun with their new newfangled new electric guitars, you know? Um, I think that Pee Wee was given one of the first strats by Leo Fender. So... Just call it. Call it. You could even add extra strings. And here's your look again. So this is getting to be a really long lesson. I'm not going to go through everything. This extra part up here, I think you guys can, you know, I'll try to come back to that one of these days. The thing is the rhythm over a doom, 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 doom. He's going bop, 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 bop. So he's playing against the rhythm in an interesting way. And this is all kind of like since I left you, baby. The only real tricky part is when he goes. That's like, whoa, what was that? You know, so that's the ending of that phrase. On the uh, 15 and 14. And then 11 and 12, 11 and 12 on the B and G, and then just move it down three frets. Anyway, I'm having a lot of fun talking about Pee Wee Creighton. I, I listened to him all day, all his records, um, and it was like, so much fun and I think everyone should just take a day off work and listen to Pee Wee Creighton and uh, but I'm not responsible if you get in trouble doing that that's not on me okay so um enjoy this song and uh, have fun playing it and thanks for watching and do subscribe to my YouTube channel thanks bye bye